All right, today we're going to talk a little bit about Latin America, the geography, which includes the political map and the physical map, and the environmental concerns, air pollution, oil pollution, and deforestation of the rainforest. So first off, let's talk about Latin America's uh, physical features. Here we have an example of the Amazon rainforest and the Amazon River, which is located right here, starts in the, uh, the mountains and flows out towards the, the ocean. So right here in Brazil area, this is where you can see most of the rainforest, the, uh, the Amazon River. Okay. Next up, we have the mountains themselves. The mountains go from the top of South America all the way down to the, towards the bottom of South America, except for right here. They bow out just a little bit. Uh, this is the Andes Mountains, so top to bottom, bows out a little bit. Right here, you see Lake Titicaca. All right. uh, so for this little bar right here, this is not the mountains. This is something completely else. This is the Atacama Desert. Okay, the Atacama Desert is formed when warm, wet winds come off of the Atlantic Ocean and drive inland, raining the whole way down. That's why the Amazon River is in the Amazon Rainforest. All that rain comes this way. As the rain pushes this way, it uh, loses more and more moisture, and as it goes higher into the mountains, the clouds do. As the clouds go higher into the mountains, they get rained out, and at the top, they have no more rain to give, and they're at the top of a mountain. So on the other side of the mountain, it comes down as a cold dry wind. And that's what creates the Atacama Desert. Uh, over here, of course, is the Atlantic Ocean on the eastern seaboard of the United States and uh, South America. So this is all Atlantic waters. Uh, over here, of course, is the Gulf of Mexico. The Gulf of Mexico stretches from Florida down the coast of the United States. Here you see Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas, and here's the Mexican coastline. All of this here is the Gulf of Mexico. Now, I grew up on the Gulf of Mexico, white sandy beaches, very warm waters. If you live in Florida, you got to watch out because those warm waters let sharks come there crazy big. All right, so uh, don't mess with uh, the sharks. On the other hand, you've got the Pacific Ocean. Now, the Pacific Ocean goes from the western coast, way down the west tip top southern tip of South America, all the way north on the western coast of South and then North America, all the way up even further than this map shows, up to Alaska, that's the Pacific Ocean, one of the largest ocean areas on Earth. There's more Pacific Ocean water than there actually is land on Earth. So uh, think about that for a second, how big that water is. It's huge, it's deep, it's cold. Here is the Panama Canal. Panama Canal is, helps the Caribbean Sea ships go from the Caribbean Sea to the Pacific Ocean very quickly. Uh, otherwise, the ships would have to go all the way south around South America and then kick back north on South America too. And it's way easier and uh, quicker to go through the Panama Canal right here, the Isthmus of Panama. Okay, you know, hundreds of workers died because of malaria from mosquitoes uh, to build that canal. Uh, the cheapest canal fare that was had to uh, uh, was charged was 35 cents. Men swam across the Panama Canal. Here we have the other set of mountains in Latin America. This is the Sierra Madre. Uh, it's all in Mexico and towards the south a little bit. So Sierra Madre. Sierra, of course, meaning mountains, and Madre is mother. Okay, and in Spanish. The, uh, the languages are reversed, the adjective and noun have different spots, so noun, then adjective in Spanish. So literally, this is the uh, mother mountains in Mexico. Okay. And my computer is slightly insane, but you get the idea. All right, now let's talk about the political map. The political map here is Bolivia, okay? This is Brazil. All this area through here is Brazil. It's the largest country in Latin America. Uh, we have Colombia here. This is Cuba, 90 miles from the coast of Florida. Haiti, right here, uh, shares an island. Okay, this is the western half of the island. Uh, this is where Toussaint Louverture was from. Here is Mexico. Mexico goes from here all the way to the Yucatan Peninsula, all the way up through the Rio Grande. Uh, that separates uh, Mexico from Texas and all of here. Sheltonia is located way up here in uh, the Sea of Cortez, this part of Mexico. Okay, Here's Panama, so the Panama Canal is here. The, Pan the country of Panama is located here. Uh, Panama is the only place where you can see the sun rise 
in the Atlantic and set in the Pacific. You got Venezuela here. Venezuela is the uh, oil producing founding member of OPEC along with some of the uh, Middle Eastern countries. This is where they have the oil pollution. You will bow to me! Alright, so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at some of the questions that you may be asked tomorrow on the test. Okay, first of all, how does geography play a role in Mexico's air pollution problem? Okay, well, it's because it lies in a bowl-shaped valley that traps air pollution. Okay, it is a big city, okay? I can see snow-capped mountains there, okay? And cars and factories can send pollutants there. But, see, the reason why we choose this answer is because the geography plays that role. This is a geography-based answer. Okay, uh, the main sources of air pollution, of course, are the factories and cars, okay? That has nothing to do with uh, geography. That's just uh, human usage. It's a uh, human environment interaction. Okay, and we see pictures of what air pollution looks like. Okay, the, uh, of course, the environmental concern we're talking about is the air pollution. The solution, a uh, way that the government can reduce the pollution of Mexico City. Okay, increase the number of cars that produce little or no air pollution. Yeah, I understand they're making more cars, but they're making cars that don't produce a lot of air pollution. As opposed to a lot of cars that do make a lot of air pollution. Uh, you don't want to ignore it. You don't want to reduce the number of buses and trains because there's more people on a bus and a train than a car. So this is actually the best mode of transportation. But since it says reducing, we can't choose that. And if we make sure the population grows, more people, more cars. So it's the, kind of the problem there. So the best answer here is to increase the number of cars that produce little or no air pollution. Uh, the solution would be the most challenging to businesses. Now, if you look at all these, they're all for good solutions to the air pollution problem. But if you're a business owner, then the one that gives you the most grief is this one, closing factories one day a week. Okay, if you're a business owner, it doesn't matter if your employees leave their cars at home. If you're a business owner, it doesn't matter how you get your employees to work as long as your employees get to work. Okay, and as long as your employer, it doesn't matter if the fuels that you use produce less pollution. What matters is do you get to keep your factory open. If you have to close it, remember time is money. So that time that that factory is closed is money that that factory is losing. Now the rainforest, of course, that happens in Brazil. Oil, okay, we know it happens in Venezuela. But what we need to know is what effect does all that oil uh, have on Venezuela? Now, the um, oil pollution aside, having oil is a tremendous benefit. So you know that there is an effect, okay? Uh, having oil is like a huge plus. So uh, oil is a resource. It gives the economy a tremendous boost. This is where we have ideas like specialization. Venezuela has oil. They oil more than they farm. So if another country has some food and Venezuela needs food, they'll trade the oil for the food, okay? And that's how it goes. You specialize in certain products. That way trade is, uh, is easier. It'd be easier for Venezuela to produce oil then say uh, focus their time on growing crops and farms. That's an opportunity cost. So, you know they, they want to do one, so they do the one, it costs the, the chance to do the other. Alright, so Mexico City again, these are pictures of the air pollution. You can see that it is not fun. Okay, so air pollution is that answer. Okay, so we have every day harmful substances contaminate our air and our water and pose dangerous risks to our natural resources. Motor vehicles, factories, refineries, and power plants release millions of tons of pollutants into the air each year. Even natural events such as wildfires, volcanic eruptions, and dust storms can add dangerous substances to the atmosphere, increasing the ever-growing threat to our environment. Some of these pollutants react with sunlight to create ground level or tropospheric ozone, a key ingredient in smog. Smog is a complex mixture of substances that can appear as a brownish yellow or gray cloud that hovers over some cities. But smog's harmful components can travel many kilometers from their source, spreading from cities to rural or suburban areas. The average person breathes over 11,000 liters of air each day. When exposed to high enough levels of air pollutants, breathing may become difficult because of an irritated throat or damaged lungs. That's important.
long-term exposure to poor air quality can cause cancer and extensive damage to the immune, neurological, reproductive, and respiratory systems. Effects of air pollution. Fortunately, the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, is encouraging programs that cut emissions from vehicles and industrial facilities. Now this happens only in the United States. You can see oil being burned the there, EPA so this is a problem Venezuela faces. Standards to regulate how much of a pollutant is allowed in the air anywhere in the United States. Okay, so there's that. Uh, oil pollution, as you can see, hurts all kinds of things. Not only does it uh, ruin your chance of using that oil, but when you have uh, vegetation, it's, that's ruined, and you have animal life also ruined. So other resources put into extreme danger. Now here's a picture of clear cutting. This is where they stopped, a little slash and burn. They needed this land to, to do things, uh, houses or farms or selling the timber for money. Um, so uh, you've got to watch that destruction of the rainforest. The uh, problem associated with deforestation is that there's less forest to produce goods that humans need. Uh, there's also less oxygen, okay, and even though uh, people make money from selling the trees, that's not a problem, that's good for the people, okay. The rate of deforestation increased when the value of crops and cattle go up. The reason why that happens is that people can make more profit more money they're gonna uh, sell the cattle they're gonna um, uh, make uh, farming crops I mean that's why they cut this stuff down it helps the actual people of Brazil long term very bad effects but short term the people live so it's a hard decision they have to make 20 percent of what resource comes from the Amazon rainforest that would be oxygen 20 percent of your air comes from Brazil your oxygen air Okay, so uh, the surrounding mountains in Mexico City, again, they trap the air pollution and they cause environmental concerns. It's bowl-shaped. Mexico City, the solution to air problems is they pass laws to limit the amount of days you are allowed to drive your car. Okay, clear-cutting means cutting down trees. Okay, this is, uh, these are uh, three reasons why the rainforest is destroyed and one is not. They do it to build roads, they do it to slash and burn so they can farm, they they do it so they can build uh, uh, ranches to have cattle, but they do not have nuclear power there. Um, another one, uh, they do it to log, they do it to mine, they do it for new settlements. They are never bored. Okay. Uh, negative effect of Brazil's uh, rainforest destruction is that animal habitats are lost. It does though, it, it creates jobs. This is a positive effect. Jobs are created. People have more room to farm. Okay, and uh, so those are the two positive and this is not true. Cutting down trees does not give you more oxygen, it gives you less. Uh, the Venezuelan government would not want to stop oil pollution because that's where uh, half of its money comes from. It's from the oil business. Okay, uh, the carbon monoxide uh, affects the children and the elderly first. They're the first ones to get uh, punished. And uh, the problem associated with too much carbon dioxide is that you get breathing problems as you just heard in the video. Okay, again maps. Uh, rainforest, Amazon River, Atacama Desert is uh, right here, but highlighted you see the Andes Mountains. There's the Atacama Desert, uh, Atlantic Ocean, Gulf of Mexico, Pacific Ocean, Panama Canal, uh, Sierra Madre Mountains, you've got the Caribbean Sea, Okay, political map. You got Bolivia, Brazil, okay, uh, Colombia, uh, Cuba, Haiti, Mexico, Panama, and then finally Venezuela. Okay, make sure you study this very much, and good luck on your test tomorrow.